It's called the monotype typecasting machine uh, and it produces composition type from 6 point to 14 point. Above 14 point we refer to it as large display and above 18 point it's display. Um, it runs on air, electricity and it has to have water to cool the mould. The main components of the machine are the air tower, the pin selection mechanism, bridge, the mattress case, the mould and the pump. They all operate during one revolution of the machine. The water we cool is for cooling the mould, the air is to select the pin so that the mattress case can be selected um, and the electricity we use an electric motor to drive it. You need all those three. The electric motor also heats the pot contains molten metal. The printing metal used is 10% tin, 16% antimony and the balance lead. The tin and antimony are used to give hardness, durability, a good sharp surface to the finished type and the lead is just used as a carrier because it flows easily and it uh, melts at around a temperature just under 700 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and of course it can be recycled when the work is printed, the type is taken away, melted down, revived and used again for printing. Uh, the machine runs at an average speed of 9,000 characters per hour and it has a maximum measure of 40 m's, which is roughly 8 to 9 inches, 8.5 inches. The inventor, it was invented by an American called Talbot Lanston. He was born in Ohio and uh, he came up with the idea of uh, movable type, producing type in large quantities to avoid hand composition. Um, hand composition took a long time and to do it mechanically would of course mean greater profit for the company that he was involved with. So he decided, to, uh, he came up with this idea. Talbot Lanson was an inventor. He invented a lock among, uh, uh, and patented a very successful uh, lock which is used in safes and such like. So you come up with this idea of a mechanical composing machine and uh, this is around 1890 he came up with the idea. Uh, he, ma he made a number of test machines, he experimented and eventually he set up a little factory in Pennsylvania. Unfortunately he ran into financial difficulties and had to leave America in a hurry under a cloud and travelled over to England, to, to Europe. And on the way over he met a number of gentlemen. Uh, one of them is the Earl of Dunraven from Limerick. And uh, they liked his idea. It is doubtful if they fully realised the potential of it, but they liked the idea. And they agreed to set up a factory to develop the product more uh, and to produce these casting machines. Of course, one of the things they had to do was to educate industry to accept them, which was a, a tricky problem. And in fact, when the first machines were produced, they were proud of the testimonials given by customers. It's the old-fashioned way, don't they? Uh, Lanston, uh, they, they invited an English engineer, Gaudi, I think it was his name, and uh, he developed the machine for the in with Talbot Lanston. Uh, the first machine produced had Lanston's name on it, and they're called the Lanston Monotype Casting Machine. And after about 10 years, Lanson's name was taken off the machine and he died penniless. In fact, he didn't benefit from it at all. They continued to develop the machine. They made the mattress case originally was 15 rows by 15. They developed it from 15 to 16, which meant modifying and expanding the machine. They changed the electric pot, the gas pot to electric. They widened the air tower to accommodate the extra row. They put in new justification wedges. They completely changed the machine and eventually ended up with what we have today, six, what was this, 16 by 17. They continued producing the machine until 1970. At that time, the new technology, phototype setting, computerization had taken over and there long was a market for them. It was too slow. And also, the product it produced was used, in, used mainly in letterpress printing. At that time, lithographic printing, which is faster, uh, had taken over. 
uh, it was cheaper to run, and so therefore there was no need to have these casting machines. The main component of the machine is the mould. This is a composition mould. It happens to be at 11 point. And it consists of it's just four walls in the mould, and it's cooled by water. Now, this mould is very accurately made. The sides of the mould are out of square when the mould is cold. And when the mould is heated up with the pot, the walls become square. It has to be exactly right. There is no room for error. If the walls are not perfectly square, the type will come out the wrong length. And it comes out the long length, it won't go into the printing presses. So it has to be absolutely spot on which is mathematically correct. The, when the moulds are being assembled, the gap in the mould, that's how much it's off square, is dictated by the colour, certain one colour of light. The next part is the matrix case. This particular one holds 272 characters. They're arranged in rows, the smallest unit value at the top, the largest unit value at the bottom. The characters can be changed around as you so wish, but you must keep them to the same unit value. At the back of the matrix case has a series of holes in it. This is where the centering pin, which is part of the bridge, go, works its way into the back of the into the matrix case and clamps it on top of the mould. It keeps it in place while the machine is running. So the centering pin will always enter the cone in the back of the matrix. The ones which here there are, I think there are five there. They're for spacing material, so you have to have spaces to get the line justified, and they get, produce the spaces. Each mould produces one size of type. Each matrix case produces one size of type. Each mould will have a wedge, which is dictated by the point size on the mould. And this is part of the monotype system. The monotype system of point sizes is based on one eighteenth of a point. A twelve point mould measures 0.166 in width. Every other point size is directly related to 0.166. It's based on that. So the maths have been done. And when the mats are done and the wedges are in place, each line will come out justified. When the lines are produced, they should come out like a piece of glass. You have the pump as well, of course, for pumping the metal into the mould. And when the mould blade is open, the metal is pumped up through the orifice, to the opening in the casting, and into the matrix, which is positioned above it. Because the mould is cooled by water, the type uh, hardens immediately. The type is then ejected from the mould, brought out to the galley, but stays until the line is complete, and then the final line is brought out into the galley itself. Uh, this is a spool of perforated tape which I've received from the keyboard operator. And the first thing the, the, the caster operator will do is to look at the instructions. This spool tells me that this typeface is plantain, so I make sure of a plantain die case or matrix case in the machine. It tells me the point size. I make sure of the correct mould in the machine. It also tells me the measure, 24 M's. And I'll set my measure here to 24 M's, so that the type would come into the galley cleanly. It also tells me if there are any changes made. There may be special instructions. He may have changed some of the characters. So in that case, I will change those characters before I run. Before you start producing product from the machine, you must cast the largest space, which is the 18 unit space. You cast it, and then you me measure with a micrometer to make sure that you've got the right size of quad. They're called quads, because they're square. Uh, and having got it to the right size, you can say that every character produced in the machine will come out to its correct unit value. But you must size up the type first, and we always use an 18 unit, the largest one, the largest space. 
The second thing you have to do is to check the alignment. It ha the characters of the face has to sit on the body in the correct position. It can't overhang left or right or be top and bottom must be correct also. So you check the alignment using a capital H. I haven't checked the alignment, measured your quad, you're now re ready to produce product on the machine. The operator would normally would wind up the pot into the casting position. Turn on the water. Make sure it's blown. Fine. Check that he has the spool in the correct position on the air tower. Turn on the machine. Engage the feed mechanism on the air tower. When the, when, the, when the job is complete, we now remove the type support to one side, swing it to one side, and we put in a lead. This is a spacing material. It's 24 m wide, as is this measure is 24 m wide. Close the two together, and we can draw the work down into the galley. We drop our support in. At this stage, uh, what would normally happen is the operator would tie up the job using what's known as page card because work was normally produced in pages. He would tie it up and when it's tied he'd lift it off the galley and place it on a storage galley for the comp to come along, take it away and put it into the whatever the entire job might be. That's and that stage he's finished. The next stage of that is I should see he gets he has to proof the job, someone else does that and check for mistakes. Hopefully there's none.